Loose ball and it's gonna go. Maddie buries it in the net to tie it. It's good! It's the start of a new broadcast year for us on FRED TV for the 2023-2024 school year, and we have opening night football here, the home opener for the Hilltoppers. Hello again, everybody. I'm Evan Massoud. I hope you had a great summer. Thanks for tuning in this summer for the Sports Report. It was great to have you all joining us for that. But now it's a new school year. Joined with Fred TV alum, Durfee former player, former student Desmond Sanders. Great to have him here for opening night. Desmond, last week, Durfee starting things off against Fairhaven out on the road. Tough loss, 38-13. to Well, one thing about Durfee, I mean, losing the home opener, it's nothing new to us. You know, um, we just talked earlier, I mean, my sophomore, junior year, we went 0-27 between those two years. Uh, and then we came back and we started off strong. I mean, the whole thing about Durfee, it's all about adversity. We'll see if they can bounce back today. And to your point, you know, the home openers, we haven't seen a lot of opening day wins. Durfee is a team that tends to get stronger as the year goes on. And we saw that your senior year, you guys did start with wins. You actually beat Taunton in week two your senior year. Absolutely. We were the underdogs in that game. I mean, uh, I'm pretty sure the Herald News said we were going to lose 40-something uh, to 14, and the score was actually flipped. We actually won 40-something to 14. Um, but like I said, the key word here is adversity. And being from Durfee, that's, that's what you got to deal with, and it's no different on the football field. Folks, Taunton last week had a big win. They hosted New Bedford and they won 41 to nothing. And we know New Bedford's offense can be rather potent at times. We've experienced it on Thanksgiving. So uh, for Taunton, that's a big win. They came out defensively strong and offensively strong. I mean, yet again, I mean, it's week one. You know, these kids have only been together for what? two, three weeks before the home opener. Now they have another week under the belt. They actually have a real live game under the belt. Anything can happen during week two. Got a brand new field here. We're breaking it in tonight with the first football game played on the new Mac Aldridge Field turf. We hope that you'll stick around. Live football coming up right after the break. Hi, my name is Laura Ferreira. I am the director of traffic and parking for the city of Fall River. As the school year begins, we want to remind everyone of the school zone safety laws. Crosswalks are here for a reason, your safety. Please use them. Always wait for a crossing guard to stop traffic and escort you safely. Drivers, please use caution when entering a school zone. 20 mile per hour speed limits are strictly enforced as mandated by state law. By being respectful and patient with one another, we can all arrive at our destination on time and in one piece. Thank you for your attention. If you have concerns or questions, please contact my office at 508-324-2123. Let's have a wonderful school year. Welcome back everybody to Mac Aldridge Field. Just about ready for kickoff here on this September the 15th, 2023. Got a bit of a sunset. The sun making an appearance here in the last five minutes. Look at the gorgeous sky here. And look at that field. We have lines, Desmond. We have lines. Oh my God, the field looks <laughs> absolutely fantastic. It looks painted. Like it I can frame this image right here with the sunset and the field and put it right in my classroom here. Absolutely stunning, and that's right. So you're teaching here at Durfee. You were a player here, a student here, and uh, now back at your alma mater, giving back to the community. Absolutely. It's always a pleasure to be back. It's always a pleasure to see those who taught me still here. You know, I still see my coaches and stuff. It's, it's awesome. 
Hilltoppers and Tigers taking to the field. Durfee won the toss. They will receive the opening kick. Back deep for Durfee, we have Eric Lucas, Keith Strong, and Aiden Lanchalt. And kicking for the Tigers, Abigail Darty. And before the game, Evan, I actually talked to the coach and I was told those are three of the guys that we should strongly look forward to uh, producing in this game. All returners. All seniors, and the kick goes through the end zone, so Durfee will start at the 25. We haven't seen you know, a touchback in years. <laughs> that was quite the boot, and I'll tell you, it's, the wind is swirling. There's, there's gonna be no advantage to being on one side or the other tonight, um, you know, ahead of Hurricane, and by the time it gets here, most likely Tropical Storm Lee. Um, but uh, it, it has been gusty. It's been a beautiful day, but it's been gusty here in uh, Fall River. So it'll be interesting to see how that affects, um, you know, play out on the field because it's windy usually here on a good day, never mind in advance of a storm. Taking it on the first snap of the game. Running, strong, the ball carrier. running play there for Strong. As he took the ball, number two. Gain of seven on the play. And it'll be three. second and three. You know, for Durfee last week, a tough loss, uh, you know, to Fairhaven, a lower division team. Um, but, you know, in a team that we've seen have trouble scoring over the years, um, you know, being able to score twice on the road, at least finding the end zone, getting a little rhythm offensively, that's got to help a little bit coming into a game like today against now a D1 opponent. Chase Absolutely, and I mean, in talking to Coach before the game again, he said the big fellas up front is who we should watch on this Two offense, minutes. and they could be easily be a deciding factor in this game, as we've seen that first run Four went down. for uh, you know a gain of seven there, and then th even this play here, clear miscommunication between the running back and quarterback, and had to improvise, but he still got a few yards because the guy's up front. Yeah, third and one. He picked up two. We do have a player down already, so a quick timeout here down on the field. As our, our trainer Kelly Mahoney out there. And just to touch upon earlier, uh, like you said, we haven't seen a touchback at, at this level in a while. So now I'm trying to think, I mean, that could come crucial on the Taunton side here where they could be on that 10 and they can just go for three. <laughs> it's very possible. Um, I'm trying to think. I don't think we saw any field goals last year. It's been, I think it's been a couple of years. Um, I think it's been a couple of years, yeah. But um, it's that's a rarity. We don't we don't get to see that very often here in in this area, that's for sure. Yeah, and unfortunately, Evan, I think that's the quarterback. He just had to improvise on that run. It looks like he's the one that's down. It looks like number two, KJ Strong there, uh, is, is warming up with the starting center at the moment. Yeah, that is Eli Chase, one of the captains on this team, the quarterback. Coming out for the moment, but uh, you're right. We'll maybe have a little wildcat action here on third and one in the Hilltoppers opening drive. You know, it's great to see him bounce right back up. I mean, yeah. hopefully we get to see him back out there under center. So clock rolling, that was a running play. And now third and one. This would be a big start for Durfee. They can convert here. And it looks like they will, had to get across the 30. And down to the 31, a two yard carry and the Hilltoppers will move the chains. I know I misspoke, I got NFL on my mind. You know, the touchback here in high school starts them at the 20, not the 25. Um, so 10 yards to gain, they got 11 and they'll move the chains and here we go again. Yet again, I'm gonna probably say this a lot this game, but those big fellas up front, they did their job and they got the first down. Well, you know, defense can win you games. The key is that you, you do have to put up some points. You can't just go one one touchdown a game. You've got to be competitive on the offensive side. 
but as we see a break here, still on his feet across the 40, down at the 47. Big time carry there for 16 yards. That was a beautifully designed run. They fake to the outside and come with a counter right towards our side here on this field. Um, I'm not going to lie, though. I think he, he's got to cover up that ball. I mean, uh, number five mm. there, Sherry and Demetrius, hey, he almost pulled it right out. Across the 50. You know, absolutely. Tuck that ball under your arm. Don't leave it flailing out there. We start last night, Thursday night football. There was the play at the end zone. We were talking about it on the radio today. Um, so, no. Protect the ball. Protect the ball. Don't give any added, you know, any added chances to uh, to your opponent. <laughs> Absolutely. Absolutely. Cover it up with both hands. Cover it up. Second and six. Durfee on... Enemy territory, other side of the field, the 49 of Taunton. Running play again, cuts back. This is Lucas. Lucas tackled, looks like maybe just shy of the 45, Lucas yes. The so area. it'll be a third and three as they pick up three. By Profit. And again, Durfee's coming out strong here. They're running these counter plays, uh, pretty much fooling the defense. Um, everyone's eyes are on number seven as he goes for that handoff, but it looks like he's going to pitch the ball, hands it off, and they run to the other side of the field. Yeah, and you mentioned seven. That's Eli Chase, the quarterback. So he was only out for a play, and he is back in there. So obviously, uh, you know, sometimes we see players go down, and it, it looks worse than it is. Sometimes it just get the wind knocked out of you. Sometimes just tweak something and then stretch it out, and you're good. So, you know, it's not always a major injury. And it looks like, does he get an extra push? I think they're marking him. Well, one, mar one line judge is coming in on the... 30, uh, the 44, one came in at the 43. They needed the 43. This is going to be awfully close. I think he's going to be half a yard short. They're going to measure. Yeah, they're going to measure here. Again, though, those guys up front. Yeah. And right now, honestly, the way that they're running the ball, you're well, not going to punt. Nope. Uh, you know, and, and honestly, they're getting the blocking, so it, it'd be foolish to not go for it here. I get nervous with the fourth downs. I think they're overused sometimes in high school just because – Obviously, the kicking game is not always very strong in Absolutely. high school sports. Um, but in this case, I think you're foolish if you don't go for it. Um, and it looks like that is the plan, although they still haven't brought the chains out. I thought they were going to measure. They called for timeout. I mean, it's, it's just to touch on that point there about going for it on fourth down, there's actually a lot of college teams who uh, refuse to punt. Mm -hmm. Just seeing, you know, statistically the success rate of getting that first down. Sure. All right, they're going to go for it. They run into the line. Defense is not quite set. Now they are. And now a timeout called by Coach Brown, and they had the first down. Timeout. They called timeout at the last second. It was an easy conversion. What I'm not sure of is why the officials called for timeout. I thought they were going to measure, and they never brought the chains. They never brought the <laughs> chains, right? I mean, ah, I mean, Coach Taylor Brown, I mean, I know he's been around for a long time, but that's one you got to see develop there. I mean, I get you want to see how the defense lines up. That's exactly what he did. Then he called the timeout. Yeah. But well, the so way he's, talked, he's talking to the officials right now because I think he was expecting a measurement. Gotcha. I mean, that, that totally makes sense. Yeah. If they're, the, if they're calling for stoppage, obviously the, <laughs> you'd expect that they're going to look at it. Now they're going to go talk about it. And it looks like, are they going to bring the chains or no? No, they're not bringing the chains. Huh. Little confusion here at the start. That's all right. See, now you tip your hand. So do you change the play or do you go to the same thing? Because you had the conversion. You need a foot. Here we go. Fourth down and inches. They put Lucas in motion. QB sneak and chases across the line to gain. That will move the chains. Durfee will have a fresh set of downs. Absolutely. You got to go with the same look here because the whole point, you, you set the line up, you call a timeout, you see how the defense is lined up. Uh, most of the time, they're not, they're not going to change how they line up. And uh, as an offensive lineman, you get used to those techniques and you know how to go at it the next round. So they got that first down pretty easy. I'll tell you what, if Derfy continues with this run game, I'm looking at the clock over there, and it's it's ticking. <laughs> it is ticking away. You took, I was literally just looking over. I said, wow, we're already coming up on seven minutes. Little reverse sweep here. Can he get around the linesman? He does across the 
40 yard line down inside uh, around the 38, 37. That's about five yards halfway there. That was a contested rush right there. They, they were able to make the, make the turn. Absolutely. I mean, my only issue with that run is you got to go full speed. You take that turn, you got to go. He definitely had slight hesitation because he didn't know what was around the corner. But I mean, <laughs> he could have definitely got a few more yards if he was full go. Looks like they gave him six. So uh, second and four. It was a good pick up there. Durfee continuing to move down the field. They faked the handoff. They go up the middle now. Dragged back and now forward for a couple yards right around the 35. Yet again, that's another counter right there. You fake to the outside, run right up the middle. Uh, but fortunate enough for the tot inside, their middle linebackers are good. Mm -hmm. uh, really quick off the ball and, and, and pick that up and read it well. Third and three. So third down and three, only one yard gained on that rush. Still two down territory now. Hand it off. Across the 30. Taunton comes away with the ball though. Was he down? It looks like the officials are saying he was. The linesman on this side. And it will be a first down for Durfee. Unfortunately I mean, enough for Durfee, this is not the NFL. <laughs> and that play will not be reviewed. And, you know, yeah. School's going to take away the first down there. It was hard to see wh where he actually went down because um, there were a lot of guys around and he went right up the middle. So to see where, from here where he went down where the ball popped out, kind of difficult to tell. That's trouble. And the first play for negative yards, Jerfie's done very well on this drive, uh, which is... Tackled by number 24, Profit. And it started at the 20. So it's already gone about 50 yards. That's their first negative play. Correction, 22, Harris. And like I mentioned earlier, on plays designed like that, you have to be Second full go. 15. You had the hesitation, but you had the hole. You got to trust the lineman in front of you. You got to trust your lead blockers. His hand should have been on his back, ready to burst through. So it ends up being a second and 15. Lost five yards, ended down, essentially. They give it to Lucas. Lucas trying to cut around. Got a good block, and Lucas will go flying into the Taunton sideline. After getting to, uh, Run out of by number five, getting to the original line of scrimmage. So he got the five yards back, and now we're looking at a third and 10 from the 30. Yeah, absolutely. That was a great block by the uh, by the right tackle over there. It looks like it was number uh, 75, uh, Haji. I mean, that's exactly what you expect him to do. Pick up the rusher on that side, and he pancaked him, put him right to the ground. If he lines up. Third down and 10. Chase hands it off. I'm gonna go up the middle. Oh no, he passed it, excuse me. I bought it. <laughs> I think the defense did too to an extent. Looks like about a five yard pass completion to Lucas, first pass of the night. And it gets you halfway there, but now you're still five yards short. Fourth and five, uh, fourth and four, excuse me. They're marking him at the 24. So, see, not a bad spot. Absolutely, that's the type of success you're gonna see when you run the ball down someone's throat, it opens up that passing lane. You said yourself, I mean, we were fooled up here in the booth, I mean, you can just imagine how they were on the field. Our officials getting together here again and discussing some of Durfee's coaches, on, Coach Taylor Brown on the field. Coach Powers, Coach Thomas also out there. You know, and again, uh, to reiterate what I said before the game, all those coaches you named, I mean, they were, they were my coaches back yeah. in 2015. All right, clock is rolling. An eight-minute drive so far. Durfee on a fourth and five. They need to convert. That's a false start. Saw the line jump. Little bit of movement and our first flag of the night. On the Hilltoppers. First uh, flag of the night is going to hurt Durfee here. 
And it'll end up being fourth and nine. You know, those right there, Evan, those are drive killers right there. You know, you have all this momentum. You're killing the clock. You're running the ball. You complete the first pass thrown in the game, and you follow it up with a false start. Things like that just cannot happen. No, you're right. It just stalls you right out. So now you need a big play. Chase dropping back. Going to take it himself, and he's going to get wrapped up and dragged back. And Taunton will take over on downs after an 8-minute and 27-second drive that Durfee looked rather rhythmic on. Um, the negative play and the penalty stops them shy of the red zone, and Taunton will have the ball. Yeah, I mean, on that play, you know, if you're, Eli, if you're Eli Chase, you gotta understand, you're fourth and long, uh, shot to the end zone can't hurt you. You know, it right. either falls incomplete or it gets intercepted and it's as simple as a punt. They end up back to the 20 instead of now they're on the 29. Yeah, you're right, I mean, why not? Try, try going to the air. I mean, nine yards on the ground, they haven't gotten that big of a play really. They had one break and that was about it. Everything's been three, four yards at a time, so. Well, the defense snuffing out that first play. It looks like just back to the uh, line of scrimmage. Virtually no gain. Mm, maybe half a yard. So good start defensively for Durfee there. And I'll tell you right now, that was a read option play ran by Taunton. That goes to show you Durfee's been watching some film on that one. <laughs> A lot of time, pass is complete. Missed tackle, and plenty more after the throw and catch. The connection there for Dylan Keenan, the QB. Pass to right there, Evan, that's why you gotta wrap up. I mean, you got the wide receiver in open field, you gotta wrap up. Arm tackles aren't gonna work in the open field, and uh, pretty much that's why I paid I mean, good job by Taunton quarterback there, number nine, McCaddy uh, Malachi. He, uh, the high snap, would have uh, expected him to throw him off, but it didn't. He didn't miss a beat. Runs into a wall and tackled two yards shy of the first down marker, a gain of eight. Cruz the ball carrier. Yeah, again, right there, yeah, number 23, Carlos Cruz. He one. just ran in the other cut. Truck. <laughs> he sure did. We heard that. We heard that <laughs> pop from the booth. Yep. Third and two, uh, second and two, excuse me, they wrap them up. Obviously down. <laughs> it was down, but always nice when you can take the ball away regardless. Absolutely, that was a huge play by the Durfee defense there. You know, I was gonna say before the snap, you know, you have him, you know, second down, two to go. You gotta mm -hmm. bring some sort of pressure, but again, the big fellas up front handle business. So they back him up, third down and four. It's a loss of two. Final 60 seconds of this first quarter, which has been a blur. Time flies when you're keeping the ball in the middle of the field. Look at a pass. Keenan lets it fly, has his man, and it's through the fingertips. An incomplete pass on third down. And again there, I mean, it's, I'm telling you, before the end of this game, we're going to see that snap fly over the quarterback's head. That's three high snaps in a row that this time quarterback has done a great job to receive there. Um, honestly, he made a great throw, just a little bit too high. I mean, the receiver broke free of the coverage. He was, a, he was in front, so certainly could have been there. Now a fourth and four for Taunton. That's the thing about this Durfee defense. We're seeing a lot of runs, a lot of read options. That secondary cannot fall asleep back there. Keenan looking back at his coaching staff for the play. 
High snap, quick pass, batted away on fourth down. The Hilltoppers stop the Tigers and they'll take over on downs. An amazing Cooper Long. play, an amazing play. Like I said, I talked before the game with Coach Miller and he, he pointed out Cooper, he said that's a man to watch. He's like, the big men up front, that's our guys to watch. And Cooper Long comes up huge on that fourth down. Cooper Long, 6'4", 220, tight end, defensive end, a junior this year. So we'll get to enjoy him for not just this year, but next year as well. There are some big guys on this team. Um, and you know, we'll see if the defense can be the bread and butter here for this 2023 edition of the Hilltoppers. High pitch out, sweeping back on the far side and the pickup of a couple of yards. The one number that stands out here, we have uh, a couple of the bigger guys. One of them is junior, Daniel Marshall, number 69, 6'8", 330. I wouldn't want to run into him, okay? <laughs> Absolutely not. <laughs> I would not want to run into him. Durfee has some big players, and for you know a team that has been undersized for many seasons that I've been here, you know we we didn't always have the biggest players. As the first quarter is going to come to an end here, a fast first quarter here at Durfee High School, scoreless after 12 minutes. You know, I'll tell you what, the scoreboard definitely the doesn't the tell the tale score. of both sides. I mean, no. both sides zero. move the ball all the way to the other side, zero. and, you know, you're coming up short when you, you get near the red zone. Well, Durfee's drive, they really did look good. Uh, they looked better than Taunton, I thought. Um, so getting kind of, getting stalled like that was, was rather disappointing considering how long they had the ball and were just very methodical, you know. B.J. McDonald, my class, you know, he was also one of your assistant coaches. He was he yep. was here at the time, but he's done quite a few games with me. And, um, you know, one of the things he always says is just stay ahead of the chains. You don't need 15 yards every play. Nope. I mean, it looks great, but you, <laughs> you just need three or four. That's all you need. Just have a rhythm. Have, a, you know, some kind of a game plan that keeps you moving forward. You don't want those negative plays. Nobody does, but... Really, I, I thought that was a kind of a good way to look at it. Say, yeah, what you don't need six or seven every play. Just be consistent, you know? Absolutely. I mean, you know, being a player here, you, you aim for that, you know, three yards per carry or three yards per offensive play. Fumble. I think he was. It looked like he was down. No. Taunton's ball as Hilltoppers turn it over. Again, turnovers, Fumble that is game killers. Nine, You're coming off a huge Mahaney. defensive stop. You know, you've been running the, the ball well all first quarter, and then you start the second first quarter off Tigers with a fumble. At the hilltop yep. for 40 Oh, the fumble. Ball. I saw the ball tumbling while there were still players up. That's the only reason I, I didn't feel he was down. And uh, sure enough, so Taunton gets the reprieve. Tigers come back out. And they will start on Durfee's 48, first and 10. One of the big things to watch for on this Taunton drive is their passing game. Mm -hmm. Yeah, not afraid to pass. Down the field, sideline, not caught. End zone, touchdown Taunton. Or are they marking him out? The pylon went down. Usually that means it's a touchdown. Looks like he Number might have stepped out short, and, but still ran through the pylon. Yeah. And again, like I said, I mean, I'm up here and I'm looking for that pass. You know, I can tell our secondary fell asleep, and that's obviously what Durfee was run looking for there also. I mean, line. you know, you run that play action, and he ran it right, right, right yep. up the gut. I believe that was uh, uh, Ryan Keenan, QB's brother, who ran that ball, number 44. Or it might have been, oh no, I'm sorry. Number 23 is back there. Carlos Cruz is the main back. And I see him back there too. First and goal, Taunton. And they'll punch it in. Tigers strike first on two plays after the Durfee turnover. It's 6-0, Tigers. 
takes it in for a Tigers touchdown. The QB keeper right there for two yards and the score. You know, that's, like I said, that's a tough bid for Dare for you. You're playing so well, a hiccup like a fumble happens. The next play, Taunton brings it pretty much to a touchdown, and the next play, it's a touchdown on the QB sneak. Turnovers cannot happen, especially against a team as good as Taunton. They will kick. Oh, bad snap, but they do get the ball off, and it is through the uprights for the extra point, a 7 0 score here as we begin the second quarter. Yeah, I mean, that PAT, that was perfect. That was right down the middle there. You know, and now we can see what Derby's really made of. How are you going to respond? Well, that's the whole thing now. It's right. You, you have time of possession in the bag right now for the first half. You made your defensive stop. You had your mistake, your fumble. So how do you recover from that? You, got, you know, these are the times... I don't care if it's week one, if it's week 11, Thanksgiving, I don't care what week it is. You have to have a short memory. You gotta get out there and say, okay, we've been running the ball down their throats. We can still run the ball down their throats. This time we gotta come away with points. Easier said than done, but they've proven that they can get down the field, right? Absolutely. It's not like they've just had back to back to back three and outs. We've seen that before, you know? In this case, no. It's, I think it's been a decent start offensively for Durfee. Now you gotta start converting it into points. Absolutely. We've seen it. I've lived it. Trust me. <laughs> <laughs> I know. It's not pretty. I know. It's funny. You mentioned it in the open that um, when you started on varsity, you were in the middle. Dudley's you guys are in the middle of the 27-game losing streak. Well, I rode that ship First that you know on. with you because uh, when I started here, uh, the fall of 2012, that was still in the middle of it. I went two seasons of football without seeing a win. That was a really rough go of it. Um, so we put that behind us, right? Short memory. We can think about it now and kind of joke about it, but at the time, it's like, okay, let's try again next week. But those games were I mean, really rough. I remember one such game, and uh, it was mid-October. It was that season, too. Mid-October, we had Brockton here, and it was torrential rain. And Adam Pereira and his brother Jake. Jake is our instructor at Morton for the TV studio there. Adam teaches here. He's in the history department. So he's come back to teach at Durfee. Um, the two of them are standing up on the roof. Got plastic baggies all over the camera. They got, they're, they're like this, you know, you know, all tucked in. Hoodies on, triple coats, trying to stay dry. They stuck it out up there. And Gary Lee and I are in here calling the game. And just to make it more fun, if, if memory serves right, it was a 59 to nothing final score. <laughs> oh, oh, trust it me. Was, I've lived through a few so of those. It was so brutal. Oh, my gosh. It was oh, really. <laughs> but um, we're lucky. We really haven't seen, you know, ugly, ugly losses like that in a while. You know, not seven just once in a while. Not, not regularly. So the team's been better. That's for sure. Absolutely. I think one of my worst beats might have might have came either across Barnstable or Brockton. Oh, Barnstable, opening night, three years in a row. I think they outscored us like 140 to 10 or 140 to 15, something like that. Oh, that did. was, that <laughs> you haven't put it behind you, Desmond. <laughs> hey, listen, I'm telling you, you know, when, when you're working hard and you're grinding away, it, it, it eats at you when you don't get these uh, wins here on this yeah. gridiron. No, of course, of course. Don't think they got it there on third down. So fourth and very, yeah, fourth and short here. They stopped them right at the line. Fourth and short. Again, now as the game progresses, as I mentioned earlier, the, these Taunton middle linebackers, they are reading these run plays and doing a great job coming through in the holes that are opening up. Mm -hmm. Will they get there? Yes, they will this time. Durfee converts on fourth and one and gets a few more thanks to the push. Chase the ball carrier. Absolutely great. That was on a silent count. It probably was off a of first sound. Ball mm -hmm. snapped nice and quick. And those big fellas up front did their job and got that first down with ease. So 
Durfee across the 40 yard line from the 41, first and 10, a fresh set of downs. Almost pulled that ball out, did you see that? He had it tucked this time, they tried it. Absolutely, I mentioned it earlier, you can tell this Taunton team, they practice stripping the ball. If you're a DB or a safety, that honestly is has to go to because you know, if a running back or a wide receiver gets to your level, mm -hmm. that means they got positive yardage, rip that ball out. Take away whatever they just gained. All that scampering, only one yard on that carry, so second down and nine. Trying to punch it through the line. And that'll grab just a couple more. So third and long coming here, uh, just shy third of the 45. About eight minutes line. left in this first half. Uh, Halftime, we have some highlights, some bonus Seven. content for you. Uh, for those of you who follow me during the summer and our weekly sports reports, you know, you know that I've covered since coming on this job, the Fall River Independent Baseball League, Fribble. It's the men's league down at Chu Park. And uh, they wrapped up their season about a week and a half ago. And um, by that point, our summer season had already come to a close because the school year started. So we have those highlights. We saved those highlights. And we will have that for you um, at halftime. So uh, looking forward to showing you how the Fribble Finals wrapped up this year. It was uh, quite a wild finish. Um, and it tends to be, you know, five-game series. And I think maybe in... I think I've done about 10 seasons. There were two seasons I didn't cover. Um, had, we had other summer projects and kind of sports took a back seat. So, so let's say 10 out of the 12 summers I covered them. And um, I think maybe only twice it didn't go to five games in the finals. So, and of course, it's like a game seven, you know, for the majors. So for me, that's, that's, that's just great. That should be a first down. I think forward progress had him. Definitely had him across the 50. I'm not sure where this line judge is because it looks well, like well by the play. The ball, Evan. I think he dropped Chase the ball on this side. Uh, okay. It's yeah, he, couldn't, he couldn't secure the catch. The Tigers will take over on so we've seen turnover on downs twice for Durfee, once for Taunton. Taunton getting much more favorable field position here. You know, we talk about the fourth down. I'll be honest. You know, Durfee's been fairly, what is it now, I guess two for four. Um, I'm surprised though they went for it that last time because they were so far back on this side of the field having just given up points. But then again, you know, you converted on that one so why further up the field wouldn't you go for it just now? So six to one, half dozen the other I guess. Taunton will have it at the Durfee 46, first and 10, 6.54 to play in the half. That's caught, good pass outside. Jukes left, beats a couple defenders. How about that move? Down the sidelines, he beat four guys. Touchdown, Taunton on one play. That's ridiculous. You gotta break down. Everyone came to the ball, not a single player broke down. He cut that back and he was gone. You gotta break down, you gotta wrap up. And Durfee's defense did none of that. Jose Toron with the 46-yard touchdown pass. And it's yards after the catch on that one. That's, that's what will tell the story there. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Unbelievable. I mean, it was a screen pass. <laughs> <laughs> Extra point kick is low and wide left. That one will not go. So 13-0, it'll stay, and Durfee will receive another is. kickoff no here. Taunton went to the air the first time for the touchback. Second time, Squibb kicked it. It was picked up around the 35. So we'll see what they elect to do. But uh, Taunton has now taken advantage clear of their offensive opportunities. Not putting sustaining drives together. Just had some big plays in their last two drives. Three plays for two touchdowns. Absolutely, I mean, Titan, they made the, uh, they made the adjustment. Uh, I've been talking about the big fellas up front this whole time. They made the adjustment. They're getting the ball out quicker. Uh, you know, they're running trick plays to get the, you know, run the ball the opposite direction, and it's clearly working. 
Yeah, they've definitely figured out Durfee's run game too. To your point about the adjustments, Durfee has not had as much success um, on the ground. So, yeah, and that's the big issue. I mean, you can't run the ball, you're not going to be able to pass it. I promise you that. From the 40, the kickoff, going low. Once again, high hop on the new turf. Picked up at the 28. Oh, the ball came loose again, I think. The signaling taunt and ball on the fumble recovery on the kickoff return. Yet again, these are things you can't have happen, Evan. These turnovers will ruin the game for you. So let's see, that's uh, two turnovers on downs and two fumble recoveries for Taunton. You know, and you really, you know, as a returner, you gotta look at what's in front of you here. You got a squib kick. You receive the ball at the 30-yard line, a little bit ahead of it. You cover that up with two hands, and your ideal is you're gonna be down. You're not running that back. You know, you're not Devin Hester. No, no <laughs> don't, don't run it back. You're already 10 yards basically further. If it, if it had been a touchback, you're already at the 30. Passing deep, wide open, and he can walk into the end zone. Totten is putting it to Durfee. Yeah, I'm not going to lie, Evan, this uh, Totten team doesn't look like the same from the first drive. Clearly a missed assignment there. I mean, he was wide open. Another one-play touchdown drive for Totten. So that's two scores, and Dervy's quarterback hasn't seen the ball. There have been two possessions of the ball. 19 nothing. And like we had mentioned, I mean, how are you going to answer back? Dervy's answered back with two turnovers. Yeah. Kick on its way and through. So 20 to Extra nothing, taunt, and all of this coming here in the last literally like 60 seconds of game time. Like I said before, you know, you got to stay in these games. 20 nothing. this is football. It's still a ball game. You know, you're only in the second quarter. You need three touchdowns and you're ahead. You know, I, your defense has made a few mistakes, but it's up to this offense to stay on the field. You got to stay on the field as an offense. Yeah, and quite honestly, it, it, you don't want to, like, overreact either, but whatever this kick is, whoever gets it, Get down, knee, knee on the ground. Let the offense get out there. Start wherever it starts. Six and a half minutes, 6.25 to be specific. More than enough time to try to get down the field and get you some points before the half. Because you remember now, Durfee won the toss. They received the opening kick, which means Taunton's getting the ball to start the second half. So you need points now. Like I said, you got to have field awareness. Know where your blockers are. Know what to do when the ball gets to you. Five up front for Durfee, three in the middle, three back deep. And they'll squib it again. They're staying away. Oh, Going to run it, picking it up. And tackle down at the 40. And like I said, that was a clear Happy example. He covered it up with both arms, making sure he couldn't get pride from his hands. Took on the contact, got the 10 yards, and went down. So Durfee with um, really some of their best field position so far in the game. Starting at the 41. First and 10 Hilltoppers from their own 41 yard line. Obviously a running play here. Just one wide receiver and he's out to the left side. Defense with a major shuffle. As Chase called an audible. And doesn't really pan out. Strong Only back carrier. Strong gets back to the line Top of, of scrimmage. No gain. So second and ten. Yet again, kudos to those taut and middle linebackers. They are firing on all cylinders, busting through the holes. That I would say, if if we go quarter to quarter, that's been the biggest adjustment to me. Is Taunton's front line on defense has completely adjusted their game because Durfee's not getting 
these pushes. They're not getting finding their little seams for the three, four yards, those little pockets of open open lanes and whatnot. They're not getting that right now. Look at, wrapped up again. If he hadn't fallen that, that actually worked out well for them. He spun around and kind of used his spin to, to bring himself down. That was a pickup of four, so five, excuse me. But uh, even that didn't look very good at the start of it. That was kind of a lucky play. Absolutely, and no knock to this Taunton defense, but I mean, if, from a Durfee aspect, if you're a one-trick pony, you know, you're not gonna make it very far in this game. You know, yeah, yeah. You no, got, I hear you. You got to think, how deep does Coach Brown have to dig in this playbook to get something started? Well, third down and five. Chase looking to pass down the field, overthrow him just a bit. There's a first deep shot Durfee's taken in this game. They were looking for Alvin Gaston, number three. And like Had a I great said, season as a freshman last year. Absolutely, and like I said, you got to dig into your playbook. You got to throw the ball. Had he connected, that's six points right there for Derby. Yep. Offense coming off. The Hilltoppers going to punt for the first time. First punt for either side. Everybody's gone for it on fourth down so far in this game. Hunter is uh, strong, number two, but not before a timeout on the field. I mean, you gotta think right now, you got four minutes, 47 seconds left in the half. You're almost at the 50 yard line. Yeah, you say you got about five, six yards to go. You think Durfee tries some trickery here? What do you got to lose? You're down 20 nothing. It, you know, anything's possible. I mean, strong can run the ball, we know that, so. Take a direct snap and you just floor it. <laughs> I'm also curious to know if he can throw the ball. I mean, you know. When he is listed as a QB. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. I read the roster. He started warming up here for that one play he ran at QB. So I'm curious. Well, you see Taunton, uh, they're certainly, they're only putting one guy back deep because they're, they may be, they may have it in their head a little bit too. No, going to punt it. Did just get it off. A tumbling punt that lands shy of the 20. It's picked up. Evades one tackle, evades two tackles, and off to the races we go. Turon to the far side, trying to return at the distance. And I don't see any, there's a flag, so this is gonna come back, but he did make it the distance, and that's what's more concerning. Hilltoppers had him wrapped up at the 22, but there is a flag that came flying in from the backfield. We saw it right after there was, I think it was that block in the back from Taunton. So this is gonna come back, probably about the 35 yard line area. But so I want the one hilltopper that was close to Turon um, got pushed, not really parallel, just a little bit too, just a little bit from behind, and that's enough to throw the flag for a block. I'm assuming that's what it was—a block on the back. Yep. I mean, absolutely. I think that Walking was on. Uh, it almost looked like KJ Strong there. I mean, as the punter, you're the last line of defense. Yeah. And he can run. So again, like I mean, he was going toe to toe to try to get to Turon, but um, so that is going to come back. Hey, not a bad estimate. I said around 35, 37 yard line. All right. So that takes the touchdown away. In what would have been the uh, first and I think Tigers he picked it up around the the, the 20, 21. So that that would have been about an 80 yard return, and that's wiped off the. Wiped out of the book. So first and 10 from the 37 of Durfee. 427 to play in the half. Bounces off the pile. Down to the turf after a gain of about seven or eight. Yeah, I gotta be honest with you here, Evan. I mean, Durfee's defense looks lost. Uh, I mean, you see there, you got a few edge rushers you know, they're not, they're not staying put. They're not doing their assignments. They're just right. running loose. They're running too far upfield. You know, and that's really why that, ran, that run play right there by Tom worked. Mm -hmm. Durfee's, you know, the edge rushes, they ran too far upfield. You cut that in and see you later. You're going for at least five more yards. Well, they picked up six, so it's a second and four from the 31. And 
And they'll hand it off again. Can't wrap him up from behind. Still on his feet and now down. Somebody wrapped him up at the ankles. Couldn't see who that was on the defensive side. I Proves think that looks like that was uh, Haji, number 75. Number 75, Haji. There you go. Thanks, Billy. First and 10, Tiger. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Coach Bill Thran, our PA here for uh, football games. I learned a long time ago. PA is your friend. If, oh, you just, sure. if you're just not sure, if you just maybe a little uncertain, wait till he says it. Because once it's been said in the stadium, that's on record. <laughs> so that's what we do. Well, they're switching out one of the footballs here. So now we're set. First down and 10. Clock is rolling. Ball at the 24. Keenan looking to pass. Pressure coming from behind and he's tackled down. Looks like he might have picked up a yard, but tackled from behind. Tackled by number 13, Souza. And yet again, if you've seen on that play, Durfee had a real big a shot at getting play. sacked there. But again, you're over pursuing. You're not staying controlled. That seems to be the biggest issue with this Durfee front here. You gotta stay controlled. Tons doing a great job being patient and watching the play develop. And they're using the time, too. They're trying to wind it down, right? Find a way to score, but using every bit of the play clock here. It's still in the huddle. Picked up a yard, so second and nine. They hand it off. Blockers ahead. Open lane. Tackled uh, inside the 10. It'll be first and goal at two minutes to go here. 201 to be specific. Sherry on the ball carrier. Tackle by number five. Yeah, I mean, if, if you're taught and now you're up 20, there's no reason why you should leave any time in that clock to even let the Hilltoppers get back into this one. No, I mean, and this is, you know, they beat New Bedford last week 41 to nothing. Um, you know, so this team, we know how good Taunton's athletics are. You know, the, the spring sports, baseball has been perennial champs in the state. Um, you know, they just got a brand new stadium too. So, um, you know, I mean, we know they have a fantastic program. First and goal from the nine. Passing. Open, caught, Turon breaks the tackle. Turon into the end zone for the score. Yeah, he made that look easy. <laughs> Again, Derfy, you, you got to wrap up. If he wraps him up there on that screen pass and the rest of the defense comes in, I mean, he might not score there. Was there a flag on the field? Yeah, I believe there is a there flag. There is a flag, so this may not stand. Let's see. So we'll hold the phone. <laughs> yeah, there's the flag right in the middle of the field. And our official coming over. Oh, ineligible downfield. But they're picking it up. Okay. So they're waving it off. So the touchdown will stand. I was going to say, if that was the call, I would have been surprised. I mean, the screen pass, you got to understand, I mean, it's a quick play. Yeah. I mean, for a lineman to get downfield that fast, I mean, that's impressive. With that, and it's a short field. Yeah. It's not like you got 50 yards in front of you. You got nine. <laughs> so, okay. No flag on the play for a legal man downfield. So, touchdown so stands. Touchdown. 26 nothing in favor of Taunton. They'll go for two here, try to make it. Oh, no, excuse me. They are going to kick it. My bad. Our official screening me. Couldn't see them holding the ball. All right, going for the extra point. Ball down, kick on its way, and that one is good. Three for four in extra points. Extra point by for, Dudley is good. For Taunton's kicker. Yeah, I got to Trinley say, Dudley. 
this kicker has a boot. Oh, Did yeah. you see the way that thing split the upright just now? Oh, yeah. Wow. He could have hit a 35-yard field goal. Absolutely. 112 on the clock here in this first half. Durfee will get the ball on the kickoff and probably run a play or two. At this, this is one of those times now, right? We talk about bag of tricks. Okay, you're down by four scores. You're not getting the ball back to start the second half. Take a couple shots down the field. Just do it. It's not going to hurt. What's the worst that happens? Absolutely. And, I mean, that's the mindset you have to go throughout this game. You're, you're not in it. I mean, right now it's 27 nothing. You have no momentum going your way. you got to try something to at least boost the morale on your sideline. Looking right now, you know, we have people not involved in the game, kids yeah. staring at the crowd. I mean, it's, it's, it's a tough one. You got to stay focused. I understand it. You know, it stinks being down 27 no nothing, but you got to stay focused. You were in it after that first drive, and then you made the defensive stop. That's when you were in it, but you weren't able to convert on those two opportunities. Absolutely. And unfortunately, that's kind of what has killed this first half for the Hilltoppers. Dudley's kick fielded by Strong. Tackled by number two, Jerome. So 105. Durfee will have one minute, five seconds here with the ball. First and 10 Hilltoppers uh, from their own 22 yard From the line. 22. So they did get back to the 20. They ended up, uh, Taunton ended up kicking it deep and um, not squibbing it. Absolutely. You don't want to give Durfee that field position. I mean, I know the last couple of plays, they weren't able to run the ball that well, but there's always that chance someone can break it. I mean, now, you know, it's an 80 yard run instead of, you know, a 60. They pitch it out, getting some blocking. Now, notice it right here on the near side, one of the blockers. It was actually Strong. Carrier. Strong had him. Tackle had the, had the man, had his man. He wasn't holding him. They were blocking well and just kind of gave up on him. No gain on the for lack of a better way Look of saying it. Um, didn't fully wrap him up. And that, that taunting player is the one who made the tackle. You know, that, stuff like that, that's going to be the difference maker in this game. I mean, Totten's playing with the utmost confidence. You're up 27 nothing. You can't give up. No. Final 20 seconds here of the half. And Durfee will run one more play before hitting the locker rooms. It's on the ground. Nowhere to go. You know, the biggest issue here is I'm looking right now I have two linemen for some reason that are 10 yards upfield when your running back is being tackled in the backfield. Mm -hmm. so Avery on the ball carrier. 27 nothing Tigers after the first half. A great first drive for Durfee that did not end, end in points. Half. They looked Off solid. The and unfortunately Zero since then, Zero. not a good thing. 27 unanswered points for Taunton. Two one play drives for scores, not not how Durfee was envisioning their opening night here at Mac Aldridge Field. Well, halftime, uh, believe it or not, does go by rather quickly, so we're gonna get to those fribble highlights that we have now, so. Um, let's pull those up. So as you know, uh, the Bra if you were following our last broadcast, uh, our last show. Uh, the Braves were the number two seed this year in the in the Fribble League. They are the defending champs. The Dodgers, uh, who went to the finals last year and lost in five games. Dodgers were the number one seed um, here in summer of 2023. So it was a rematch of last year's final. And we're heading into, into game four with the Dodgers up two games to one. The Braves trying to do what the Dodgers did to them last year. Forza game five after being down 0-2 in the series. We'll go top of the second after the Braves jumped out to the one nothing lead. The Dodgers grabbed two runs of their own and now threatening for more. Brian Cipolla at the plate. Two down, gets the single. Two runs coming home. Owen Caldwell from third, Jervis from second. The Dodgers put up five in the second. They take a 5-1 lead. We'll move to the sixth, same score, two out magic for the Dodgers again. Chase Stafford with the rope down the line. Two more coming in, Jervis and Adam Rodericks. 
Come plate word, it's a seven to one lead. Next batter up, Tyler Dineza at the plate. Gives this one a ride, deep to right field. See John Del Carmo, pulls it back over the fence. After 12 fribble seasons, I can easily say one of the top three all-time defensive plays that took two runs off the board. Seemed to spark the Braves in a big way. They cut the lead to 9-8. Nick Decibus with two outs in the ninth delivers the game time RBI, erasing deficits of seven to one and eight to three to pull even in the final frame. We head to the 10th, Dodgers up 10 to nine, hoping to close it out, could not do so. Brad Hartwell delivers the two out. Two run single to send the, the series to a fifth game. The Braves win it in 10 innings, 11 to 10. Dave Bushnell and Matt Swenson scoring those runs. So now we go to game five, winner take all. Tight one throughout the first two thirds of the game. So we'll pick it up in the bottom of the sixth. It's a tie game, 2-2 the score. Alex Dominguez leading it off. Golf set, see ya. Deep right field, no one's getting a glove on that one as it goes into the trees. Dodgers pull ahead three to two with the solo shot. They weren't done, little later in the inning. Two on, one out for Tyler Dineza. Lines it the other way. Left center, Jervis, Brian Zippel are both coming home. Dodgers break this one open, a six run, sixth inning. They would not trail again. We head to the ninth, 10 for the score. Dodgers looking to close out a championship season, and they do. Alex Kenevi swings and misses. The Dodgers dethrone the reigning champs. They pick up their first title in 10 years. A Dodgers team that has zero players from the 2013 championship team. Starter Skylar Beckerman got the dub after eight strong innings. Caught up with him after the final out. I think this year we had the mental toughness. Um, and honestly, like, this is just a great group of guys. Um, this offseason did a lot of recruiting, got some great guys, and... Um, you know, even though going down two, you know, we were ready to come out today and, and just play ball. And, um, you know, today was just about having fun, and we had some fun today. And so that wraps up your 2023 Fribble season, summer baseball. And uh, what a good season it was. Saw some really great highlights, but I'll tell you, that play by uh, Del Carmo. Desmond, I know you were watching over my shoulder. What a ridiculous catch out in right field. Oh, absolutely. I mean, it's funny, too, because, I, I mean, I'm great friends with half of those guys. So sure. I was following them on all their social medias and stuff that they would post, and it's always funny, you know, just thinking I, I was playing with them since we were five years old, and now they're still going. Yeah, absolutely. The Braves have been around forever. They're one of the older teams in the league. Um, I'd say probably 90% of that team is the same guys that were here in 2012 when I, you know, started covering the league. So, um you know, it's nice. It's nice seeing these guys every summer and then getting to see some of the newer guys that break into the league. Um, always enjoyed when, you know, when Legion, which kind of was a, f a feeder for that, uh, you know, we'd start to see some of the high schoolers playing in the league. And um, so it, it's it's a good league. You know, we, we see some pretty decent action from there throughout the summer. So um, we did see some Legion play this year. Legion had a really strong season. And uh, so, so it's some great summer action. And, uh, you know, we look forward to next summer, of course. We're going to take the break here. We have about six minutes left in the halftime break. We will see you for the third quarter live from Mac Aldridge Field. Stay with us, everybody. Don't go anywhere. Watupa Rowing Center is uniquely located on South Watupa Pond in Fall River, the only school of its kind in the region, tuition free and open to all. At Watupa Rowing Center, we're really looking for you. There's so much potential here, guys. Like, you can be a part of something so cool. South Watupa is a non tidal freshwater pond large enough to accommodate a six lane race course. For most of the year, we are out on the water, and during the winter months, our rowers head inside for strength and conditioning. I thought it would be a good idea just to try it, and I came here and now I'm stuck, I guess. I love it. We like to have athletes that or kids that like want to learn to row, no matter the background, because that is how you get the diversification. This is a sport that can fit anybody who wants to do it. Our schedule is flexible. When you are ready, we are here. We want to make you the best you can be. 
we're kind of up and coming. What we want is to make sure that rowing is accessible to anybody and everybody who wants to try it. From your first practice to your first regatta, our experienced coaches will be there to support and encourage you. I've been looking for a new hobby, so I tried it out um, the summer program and I really liked it. At first it's going to seem real hard, but the more that you do it, the easier it gets. Student rowers learn hard work, dedication, and integrity. Vital skills that directly transfer to real life off the water. Crew is the ultimate team sport. Ready and go! Yes! When we get in that boat, we know we all have to watch out for each other, make sure we're all doing our jobs, because each part of the boat has their own job. And if you're not doing your job, then someone else is going to suffer. Rowing can be another course to higher education. You might even be eligible for scholarships. Our goal for us as coaches, right, is to like build that foundation right now, get those kids, get high school kids, get middle school kids that might like to do it, and hopefully they love the sports as much as we do, that they want to take it to the next level. At Watapa Rowing Center, there is so much to see, so much to learn, and so much to love, and it's right here where you live. For more information, visit our website at watupparowingcenter.org. Back to Romero. Romero forges ahead. Touchdown, Hilltoppers. Coming in, you're really like scared. You might be a little nervous, but I think being a part of a team gives you friends who can come with you all the way through high school and then coaches looking out for you. I think as an athlete, you can improve and learn like the art of dedication. That shot taken. Cadet will take the shot and score. Hard work pays off, like from my freshman year, starting off hardly knowing anything about sports to now my junior year, having almost all the school records in track and field. I feel like this school shows a lot of opportunities in classrooms and out of classrooms. I flip to Espinal. Open three, got it! Big time hit from Granham. Durfee has such a great community, such great pride, you know, where we're people who love to be here, we love to compete, we love to play, and it's, it's such a great um, opportunity. Corralled by Kamara, full steam ahead. Weaving through traffic, takes the shot, and it's good! Kamara, coast to coast! I've made a lot of great friends playing sports. I really appreciate how it fosters a community amongst all of the athletes, even in between sports seasons. Good pass up the field, gets some good backspin on it, and it's a loose ball, shot, and it's good! To tie it, it's good! Madeiras on the PK! You have a lot of support and a lot of people around you. It's a good environment, especially the sports teams. Great. O'Connell with the three, and the lead is over 30. I know how much pride it takes to be a topper, so it made me work harder so I can be more successful. really great to just be able to learn accountability, reliability, um, just getting involved in school and I feel like the best way to do that is to join a sport. In the air in a deep left field, Coppola heading back at the wall, it's gone! Three run home run for Montia and it's a two run game!
Welcome back, everybody, to Mac Aldridge Field. Uh, there's a couple of promos you saw. Um, one is, you know, from the rowing center there. And a um, little dated, you know, as you saw, some people wearing masks still. That was still uh, during COVID times, but uh, really a great piece. And the rowing center, you know, we've done a lot of stuff down there. And um, really, really a cool place, um, pretty great thing that we have here in Fall River. Um, I think I've mentioned it before, uh, probably last school year, that, you know, the, the Watupa doesn't have any solid banks. It's just natural banking. And they were looking at South Watupa for the regattas for the, if Boston 2024 Summer Olympics had become a thing, they were going to have the rowing right here on South Watupa Pond. I and mean, that's pretty amazing. So, um, but some great stuff, you know, we were able to get some really cool aerials. And of course, like with everything, the drone has really added a lot of perspective to some of the content we produce. You know, we don't like to overuse it, but even just 50 feet off the ground, it's pretty amazing um, how much things change in terms of how it looks and what you can capture. So we've really, you know, we enjoy doing stuff down there. And then uh, the, the second piece you saw, we debuted it last spring. Um, that was at the request of Athletic Director Brad Buston and his department. Uh, we had done a piece back in 2020 uh, to, re you know, for like sports recruitment and whatnot, and that was very dated. And uh, so we worked last year, last school year, to get all kinds of new stock footage. And um, so that was like, so while we were doing broadcasts, a lot of times we had another person scheduled that wasn't doing the live stuff. They were down on the field getting those, getting those sideline shots, the creative shots. So uh, we worked really hard to get that done last year and kind of double staff so that we could do it. And uh, really happy with how that came out. So. Um, so yeah, so good look at a couple things. You know, one thing being all the stuff Durfee has to offer, of course, for sports. But um, you know, the the rowing center also is uh, really great. So definitely take advantage. They have a lot of free programs. If it's something different, but if it's something you might be interesting, you know, kids out there or their parents, if your children think you know they might be interested in it, it's a different kind of sport. But um, there's a lot of free programs that they offer down there to kind of get your feet wet, no pun intended. Uh, so, <laughs> so um, something new here, mandatory warm-up and stretch. I don't remember this last year, uh, but coming out at halftime, so 12-minute halftime break, and then they come out and they get three minutes on the clock to do some added stretches. That's what you saw. Um, so third quarter about to begin in Durfee will kick off for the first time tonight. Quick thoughts, Desmond, as we get ready for the kick. Second half, keys to the game. Uh, pretty much for Durf, it's discipline. Uh, I know, you know, being a product of Coach Brown, I know he went to that locker room and he preached that. You know, you got to stay disciplined. You got to stop over pursuing. You got to protect the ball. So right there, it starts, it starts with being disciplined. And look at this, look at this. Oh, they were oh. trying for the onside kick. And you know what, Durfee almost had it. And a couple of the and players up front kind of, they, they get off the gas. Right. Did you see they kind of slowed up? And I think to your point, the hesitancy, maybe there's just, you know, don't want to do the wrong thing and be too overzealous on the ball. But I think Durfee had a chance to get at that. Well, it's a good attempt, again, at this point, right? Try, try everything. Let's start going through that playbook. I mean, 27 nothing's going to be very difficult to come back. We've got to be realistic on that. And um, I think it would be great to see, you know, Durfee trying to pull some different plays out of their bag of tricks. You know, why not start testing the waters now? You know, so you know what maybe you have down the road. Absolutely there. That you definitely can't hold up on an onside kick. You know, your objective, if you're not a ball guy, you got to take out those guys in the front line so they're not the ones catching that ball. They fake the handoff one way. They go the other direction. That was to Carlos Cruz that ended up getting it, and he loses uh, quite a few ball, yards. Tackle by number See, that play right Andy. there, that defensive play, what did I say? Discipline. 
everybody in that front line, they didn't over pursue, the over pursue mm -hmm. and stood disciplined to what they had to do. They were nice and controlled. And look at that. They got a tackle for a loss. They did. And, you know, forward progress kind of kind of stumped me a little bit there because um, it was hard to see initially, but um, he did get a little closer to the line of scrimmage than I thought. So only a loss of one. Still a loss, but it certainly looked like it was a little more than that. Um, when the play was happening live. But the forward progress gets him down there, close to the line. Tackled right on the emblem, just across Keenum's midfield. You know, that was a great tackle. He doesn't make that tackle. We might see another six tackle up there on the board. Four, the time. <laughs> Seriously. You know, and that's something I was questioning is mm -hmm. how aggressive is Taunton going to come out? I mean, right now they seem like they're doing what they have to do to get that clock to keep going. Right. You know, and, and I'm thinking, too, there's um, – we saw this last year. There's a uh, – just trying to find it. I want to make sure I have it right here. But there's a mer the mercy rule for football. I think it's 35 points. Um at the start of the, intercepted. Hilltoppers pick off Keenan. Coming near side, that's a face mask. That should be a personal foul and a flag. And that's how you get momentum. That interception needs to go a long way. The offense now needs to capitalize that because like I said, this is football, baby. One touchdown, that's six points. And the flag on the ground as well, so that's a face mask, personal foul. And Durfee should have the ball on the other side of the 50. There is a flag on the play, personal foul, face mask on the Tigers. Well, the Tigers' first turnover of the night. Can Durfee take advantage here? You just basically wiped out the uh, coin toss and the possession, you know, because you got the ball. Now you got to cash in. Absolutely. Only two minutes came off the clock also, so you have all the time in the world in this quarter. you got to make it worth it. First and ten Hilltoppers from the Taunton 41-yard line. Durfee from the 41 of Taunton. Handed off. Wrapped up after short gain. There seems to be some confusion between Eli Chase and Sherry, the, the offensive carrier. coordinator down there. Yeah. Yeah, I agree because it looked like he was going to get a little more space. Two on the play. And it kind of, things got a little jumbled up there behind the line of scrimmage. You know, I also think that's why that play wasn't as effective. Um, the spacing was definitely off between the person in motion who received the ball and the running back in the backfield. I mean, they didn't really fool anybody. No, that's the whole thing. It looked, had a good burst of speed and then immediately wrapped up. Absolutely. There was no separation. You got to sell it on those plays or else they're useless. And I think that's why they're having to talk right now during the timeout. No, there's a taunt player down. Oh, down I didn't see him on the Yeah, down on the far side there. Yeah, like I said, I mean, if Durfee can capitalize on this, um, looking on the brighter things, I mean, if you kick the field goal, you're now it's 7 20, 27, um, maybe even 8 to 27. That's three possessions you need to get back into this ball game. Right. No, absolutely. I mean, you got to try to start chipping away. That was Ethan Harris. Making his way off the field. Yet again, those are mistakes that cannot happen. 
that connection between that quarterback and center has to be flawless. You need to get the ball to be able to hand it off. A turnover right there would have been crucial for Derby. So third down and nine. Hilltoppers need a big play here. Get them at least, if they can't get to the line, of the line to gain, you can pick up about six here, six or seven. You need a good chunk of yards. Pressure coming. Big hit. Prior to the pass, or I should say as the ball was getting there, there's no flag. That was played cleanly. Chase and it's passes. fourth incomplete. down and nine, incomplete. Broken up by number three, turnoff. Those are the kinds of issues you're going to run in when you fumble you know, the snap here. I mean, you run that play, maybe Fourth you get a yard or two. Yeah. You know, and now you're looking at a better situation where you can probably run the ball again. But now you're third and long. I mean, you got to look for the pass there, and that's exactly what they did. So now you got to kind of go for it. You're not going to kick it. Dropping back. More time. Down the field. Almost picked off. Should have been picked off. And Durfee, four and out. After the, re after the interception. That's a missed opportunity there. See, and now here's the issue. You have half your offense coming off the field. They got the their Tigers heads down. You're looking at the sideline, they have their heads down. There's nobody out there trying to boost the morale. Like say, hey, guys, mm. we're still in this. We just intercepted the ball on our last defensive uh, drives here. Now we got to find a way to get back in here. You gotta want the game. I mean, just from the looks of both teams, I don't think I've seen a single time player with their head down. Even before no. when the game was 0-0, zero, zero, mm -hmm. they were still running plays as if they knew they were gonna be successful in this. That's a great stop right there in the backfield for a loss. Yet again, let's retract to the word discipline. Yeah. You had your two guys Ooh, onto the, the QB. Time, yeah. And your guys that are supposed to go after that Tackle ball on the run Lange play, they all did their assignments, and that's why that was successful for Derby. So loss of one yard. And we had this uh, last year. Second I was mentioned to you the mercy rule if it got to that. Um, it's 40 points or greater at halftime. Or, you know, in moving forward as well, any combination of 40 points. So it could be 46 to 6. You know, so it could, doesn't have to be 40 to nothing. It's just that the deficit has to be 40 points. And so obviously we're not at that drastic of a level here. Keenan avoids a tackle and will scamper for the first down across midfield. It's a pickup of about 13 or 14 yards. Carrier. Tackle by number three, Gaston. You know, that effort there, you got to break down and you got to hit the QB. You over pursue and, and now you paid for it. From the Hilltopper, 47 yard line. Yeah, 47 ends up being a 14 yard dash for the QB. And Taunton in business again on Durfee's side of the field. You know, and hats off to that QB there, number 12. Dylan Keenan, I mean, he's doing a great job uh, catching every snap going his way. Some been high, some been low. But one thing he doesn't do is he doesn't panic. Right. He lets the play develop, and so far he's been successful. I'm going to hand it off again. Turo down the line. Excuse me, that was Cruz, not Turo. My bad. Cruz, the ball carrier. Almost got down the line the whole way. There is a flag on the play. Yeah, that's coming back. Somebody got a little too aggressive there. Uh, it's going to go for a holding Tigers. 10 out of 10 times there. Got to let go. Got to let go of the jersey. Yep. That's a break for Durfee for sure. So my last um, sports report this summer... Got to uh, see a familiar face, one of your former teammates, Eli Brooks, back here at Durfee, our new strength and conditioning coach. Eli, 
is down on the sideline, right on the bottom left of your screen above the Fred TV emblem there between number 10 and uh, number 52 for Durfee. Absolutely. Me and Eli, you know, it's one of my best friends. You know, we go on golf trips together year, yeah. every year. You know, it's amazing. I mean, he's honestly one of the best running backs the school has ever seen. You know, he holds the uh, single season rushing record here at the school. That's right. Absolutely an amazing athlete. Had a great career over at UMaine, D1 football. And I'll tell you right now, Jason Hall. Oh, what a pass. Gone. Demetrius Sherian catches. Another touchdown pass for Keenan. For a Tiger touchdown. I'm just going to say Jason Hall, you know, had over 1,000 yards in five games. And uh, that record, I seriously believe, had we had a normal season his junior year and not the abbreviated spring COVID season, um, it would have been very tight oh, <laughs> after 10 games, um, you know, to see where he would have been at. And, I and that was after just his play, junior year, mind you. Um, but he, he and Eli, man... They, they had some incredible games. Oh, absolutely. And both of them, I must say, you know, a product of the Fall River Falcons, you know, a great Papa Warner program here. Uh, can't speak, you know, more highly of, of the group of guys and coaches they got with those kids, man. Again, you just named two of the best running backs to ever walk on this field here, and they're products of that. Yeah, it's, it's really, it's meant to be, you know, it's meant to be a feeder program um, as that kick is no good. So three for five tonight on the extra point. Extra point um, by Dudley you know, and of good. course, you know, there were some changes a couple years ago. They, they dropped the Pop Warner. Now it's American Youth Football. So they're, it's a different organization. Um, and I, I remember, if, if I remember correctly, <laughs> it's been a while, but Coach Bear, um, I remember him explaining that some of the rule changes um, – that they were going to adopt with American Youth Football, um, there were more safety regulations, and that was one of the bigger reasons to change, um, because safety is key. And I, I remember, I remember that being specific, you know, or he being specific on that point. Because I said, well, why? Why? What's the, what's the reason for the change? Kind of like why, you know, now we have the federation rules here. You know, we were one of the only states, I think, one of two states that didn't follow the federation rules. For high school sports and you know we finally I guess you could say finally conformed <laughs> you know and uh, took that on and that's why you see the 12 minute quarters now um, if you recall um, as we had a flag at the tail end of that so Taunton is going to kick from further back um, that's a personal foul they usually kick from the 40 so 15 yards um, you know Diamond Conley for football used to do 10 minute quarters being lower division while we had 11. Now everyone's doing 12, which personally I think is too long. It's high school. 11 was a good spot. Um, these games can get very long, just that one extra minute of game time. 12 is a long time, I feel like. Um, but then again, you could argue on the other side of it that the rest of the country was doing it, and having that extra minute of game time, if you're being serious about playing in college, gets you a little closer stamina-wise to the 15. So, you know, again, I said it earlier about one other topic. Six to one, half dozen the other. Um, I just know that these games, you know, overall, seem to have a much longer run time now, just with that one added minute of game time. Um, so I don't know how much it has benefited teams here for that change, I, you know, versus the rest of the schools around the country. Right, absolutely. And I'll tell you firsthand, when you're down there, that clock flies. That yeah. clock flies when you're playing. So Durfee starting from the 40-yard line. And looks like they might have coughed up the ball again. Is he down? Strong the ball carrier. Looks like they're marking him down. No one's really made a definitive answer here or a signal. Oh, nope. there it, is. it is. There you go. Taunton ball. Third fumble. There was a fumble on the play. Third fumble Taunton. committed by Durfee tonight, recovered by the Tigers. 
You know, like I said, we, we asked ourselves, how is Durfee going to come back? Are they going to dig deep? Are they going to find it? Are they going to stay disciplined? And I, I think it's definite we can say right now, they have done none of that. You know, like I said, turnovers will kill you. And so far, that has been the name of Durfee's game here. The countless turnovers, and Taunton is absolutely taking advantage of every single one of them. So we'll see if they take advantage of this one also. Well, let's see. On uh, possession changes, whether, whether an actual turnover like that or downs, Taunton, as we said, has had two one-play drives which is just crazy. That makes me think back to uh, to Thanksgiving Day here uh, a couple years ago when Durfee won. That was uh, two years ago. We had a couple of uh, one-play scoring drives that were just crazy. And uh, Javon Holly and Jaden Lewis just steamrolled. They just ran all over the Whalers in that game. And uh, this is this reminds me of that, honestly. And again, two names that you just Second named. Five. Products of the Fall River oh, Falcons. Yeah. I was going through old tape. Uh, it's funny, we still say tape. It's not tape anymore, but old footage. <laughs> um, you know, when I, when I do the summer stuff, I look back at other things that I had filmed in other interviews because sometimes, you know, we have repeat stories. Like the Hilltopper Golf Classic, I do that every year. I go to the country club and I spend three hours there and, you know, interview people it takes time you know following golfers around it's that's not a quick story <laughs> you know you know you play golf you play regularly golf is very chill um so competitive but very chill so it takes time and um so go spend a few hours at the course and do a story there every year and uh, so i'll look back because number one i don't want to repeat like the same narrative, the same script every year. So I look back a couple years back, two or three, say, okay, what was this one like? I'll watch them before I go. And um, I did that for one of the football camps that were here. It was the uh, the Patriots football for you, the youth camp the, that the Patriots alumni do, uh, Coach Buffington. And um, I hadn't done it in a couple years, so I looked back at the old footage and... Um, I had an interview with uh, Jason Hall, <laughs> fifth grade, saying, I can't wait to get to Durfee because I want to be the best running back the school has ever seen. And you know what? If he hadn't gone to prep school, and I don't fault him for it, I'm just saying, if he stayed here for senior year, I think he would have had that title. Oh, he might have. If he had played four, four full years. But to look back and to see that, and that's goal setting, it's maturity, and it shows you what the feeder system can actually do. Absolutely. That's my whole point in all of this. So it goes to what you're talking about as well. Absolutely. But I couldn't, I couldn't believe when I watched that back, I remember I sent it to Brad. I said, you got to show Jason this. Or I sent it to Taylor. I sent it to somebody. I said, you got to show this to Jason. <laughs> Pass complete. Tackled out of bounds. Down inside the red zone. Keenan's pass complete to Escobalas. Tackle by Lucas. As you see here, Taunton is now just, they're exposing the lackadaisical, you know, Durfee defense here. I mean, there's zero aggression. And, the uh, and pretty much line. what's going to happen now is these corners, they're either going to play aggressive and get burnt, or they're going to stay back and they're just going to feed off of these screen passes. Yeah. And, you know, too, the uh, I'll tell you one thing is that as fast as that first quarter was, we're making up for time here because <laughs> it's uh, these last the second quarter and this quarter here have really, really dragged on quite a bit. A decent crowd here watching on the web. Appreciate you tuning in for our first broadcast of the season of the school year. Um, not actually a rather busy week next week. Um, we're gonna see quite a few teams. Uh, actually, we're. Basically going to see everybody. <laughs> We're going to see everybody next week. Um, as you all know, I uh, I had started um, years ago, nine years ago, doing some games with Dartmouth Cable on the side. And um, so now with the conference being conference opponents with the Indians, DCTV, 
schedules me for the Derby games out there, which is nice. Gives our crew a bit of a break, but we still get live coverage of all the same matchups regardless. So whether it being the one away game versus one home game, it's it's all the same. Um, so girls soccer um, is heading out to Dartmouth on Tuesday, four o'clock game. That'll be live on the Dartmouth Community Media Facebook page, as well as on Wednesday, field hockey will be out there. And uh, man, oh man, that's such a rivalry. And field hockey last year, uh, our girls are the defending league champs, and they beat Dartmouth last year for the first time in years. And uh, so that I'm so looking forward to that game uh, because that's that's the rivalry for field hockey conference play. It's not New Bedford, it's not Brockton, it's Jerfy Dartmouth all day long. Um, so those two games, 4 o'clock Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday night here, boys soccer against New Bedford, 6 o'clock. And then uh, next Friday, we also have slated for uh, girls volleyball against New Bedford. And um, if that gets done fast enough, we're hoping to get over to Somerset, get you some football highlights that we can show you um, the following week during our live coverage. So uh, we're trying to hit everybody in one week. We'll see how we make out. <laughs> when do you have time to sleep? <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. Um, yeah, it's it's been a busy week. I actually went to I went to a concert Monday, went to the Red Sox game actually last night, and uh, couple that with My and the ball everything carrier. else. It a couple really late nights this week actually, and I don't mind. I'm usually up late anyway, but it's different when you're just Turn home versus you know dealing with Boston traffic and back and forth. And but uh, yeah, I went to. Uh, Saw the Eagles, um, well, they're calling it a farewell tour. We've heard that before. Um, <laughs> but we saw what is essentially supposed to be a farewell show uh, in Boston, one of their two shows they did there, and they had Steely Dan as the opener, which was really kind of cool. Because the um, they're Boston rather Tigers big in their own three. right. Your you know, maybe not so much zero. anymore, but they have quite the following still. Uh, the place was going nuts for them. So uh, it was a really good show, and... Um, I, I'm, I'm really glad. I'm glad we went. I've seen the Eagles once before, and uh, I'm glad we went again. It's like, you know, you don't realize, if you listen to that kind of music, you don't realize until you get to the show that you know every song in the set because they're all played on the radio. Right. <laughs> it's unbelievable um, how many hits, you know. So um, it, was, it was a great show. Um, and then, like I said, last night we were at Fenway, and that was a long game because we had some really long innings. And um, even with the pitch clock, I don't think we got we didn't get out of there until 10:30. Wow, so that's a pretty long game. But they also didn't start till 7:15 because we had Fox Thursday Night Baseball, uh. which I'm totally against, by the way. Okay, I'm totally against it. I like the as much as I am not crazy about the Nesson broadcasts these days. You know, you're never gonna have Don and Jerry again. Nothing like that was, but. Um, you know, why would you, as Fox, why would you go up against NFL Thursday Night Football for regular season baseball? That just seems really dumb. Oh, absolutely. But you also... <laughs> I, I mean, mean, really. It's tough. But then you have people like me. I mean, if you go to my living room, I have three TVs in my living room for a reason. <laughs> You're obsessed. I'm obsessed. <laughs> you know? I got Thursday Night on one. I got <laughs> baseball on the other two, you know? Yeah. I guess. Yeah, I mean, I don't know. I, I just see it like, it, to me, it just seems like unnecessary. I don't know. That's just that's just me. Just me. I mean, yeah, I mean, you're saying it to a baseball guy, so it's a little tough. <laughs> well, I'm a baseball guy, too. But, uh, I mean, what's wrong with, why do they need a national game on Thursday night? I guess that's my question, right? But, because Fox always had Saturday baseball. That was always the thing. ESPN had Sunday night. So you two national games on the weekends. And then they started Monday night football. Then there was Wednesday night football. Now there's Thursday night football. It's just like, huh? Really? I don't know. I digress. Who really cares what I think anyway? So <laughs> <laughs> I can assure you Fox is not watching this broadcast right now. <laughs> they ended up going for two here as they replay. Strong, my ball carrier. 
that's like we mentioned earlier. We were going to say the field goal yeah. going to come into play here. Unsuccessful for Taunton, but right. I mean. I know, excuse me. I said they went for two. And that was Durfee carrying the ball because uh, it was the extra point miss. I had to switch up the graphics here, so I was in another screen. I was not watching. So first down, uh, now second and 10 after Strong took that for no gain. Durfee pinned down deep here uh, at the seven-yard line. Picked up. Oh, now they moved. Wow, that was a late move by the uh, down marker. My goodness. Second down and six. Uh, and four, excuse me. They picked up six. And now a first down. You know, see, those are the things. It's like everybody's a volunteer. But I'm, this is no criticism. But you, know, you see the player come up the, come up the line. And then immediately, like, okay, good. We see where the ball goes down. And then you see that the down marker hasn't moved. So now you start questioning, okay, did, did was there a penalty? Was, did something happen that you didn't see? There's so much. There's 22 guys on the field, <laughs> plus the officials on every play. So, you know, you get the delay there, and you say, okay, what happened? So I thought they were back in the original line of scrimmage, and all of a sudden the down marker is running into place. Big hit, tackled out of bounds, but a decent run once again. Looks like maybe an eight-yard pickup. Yeah, second down and two. Knocked out of bounds by number 50, Perez. And I'll tell you what, when you're down 33 to second zero, all these guys here on the sideline should be by coach's hip, because guess what? It's going to be your time to go in there, and you, if you prove something, you can become a starter. Yeah, of course. This is where you start seeing, you know, some of your non-starters because coaches want to see what they have and they know the game's kind of in the bag, whether good or bad. It's kind of already done. Another first down for Durfee. You know, not to jump ahead either. I mean, it, it's tough at this level in high school. Starting off 0-2, I mean, that really slims down your chance of advancing to the playoff. I mean, because yeah. uh, now they go by the point system. Yeah, you know, absolutely. It's, it's not like, oh, if you win your division, you're in. I mean, we don't play New Bedford till Thanksgiving. So now it's the point system. So these games yeah. here in the beginning of the season, they're really important. They're really important. And, you know, I always found it really weird when they changed up the playoff situation because you're seeing, you know, for us, playing New Bedford, and it was only a three-team conference at the time. So you're playing for a conference potentially on Thanksgiving once the playoffs are basically, you know, all but done. You're one week from the finals, and that's it. So I always found that a really weird thing, but there's there's a lot of things that the MIAA has done over the years that I find a little strange. But the uh, the power the power rankings, the point system. I've I'm coming to I'm coming to uh, I guess accept it, and I don't want to say fully like it. Um, what I don't like is necessarily the at-large brackets because it reared its ugly head the first year. We had a girls volleyball team from out in, I think it was out in Lee, Massachusetts, which is like border of New York State. And they drew Nantucket for round one. <laughs> you had your absolute we'll furthest west carrier. against your furthest east. Tackled they had to do it on a yellow. Sunday because they would have missed an entire day of school between three hours on a bus yeah, plus a ferry right. plus okay, the game fine. and then get back. I mean, come on now. So I liked the sectionals. I really did. You know, you're seeing common opponents and then you're seeing them in the playoffs as well. So you have sectionals, then you get a state final four and the best of the best square off. I really did like that. The point system, I don't mind. I just wish I understand it or understood it better because, I mean, I talk to coaches, athletic directors. The equation and the formulas they use to determine this is something that you need, like, Pythagoras for. It's ridiculous. Chase it's so complicated. Carrier. I'd like to know who drew it up. Tackle Seriously. Because we had coaches here. They're saying, yeah, we're not going to make it in unless we, unless we win. Third and one. So, you know, you lose the game. It's the last game of the season. And then, so we're talking about it and saying, well, that's going to be the season. And then the next day it comes out. Well, you lost to a higher opponent. So guess what? You got some points out of it. So now you're in the tournament. And we're like, now, all right, let's redact everything we just said, you know, or retract everything we just said. So it, it's like, if you want to roll out something, let's make it easy to understand. Let's put it all out there for people to see. I don't know if anybody other than, like, maybe the Boston Globe, because there's a couple guys on uh, Twitter from the Globe that are, like, 
they, they're updating stuff constantly. I follow them. And, or is it Twitter now? Can we even say that? <laughs> um, another thing. But um, So I follow him just because he's like the go-to guy. And he's handling stuff statewide. So there's always results. Like last Friday, it's just constant tweeting. Okay, here's this team's match, this matchup, this matchup. Every football game, it's just constant updates. It's great. But the formulas, though, I don't know if he's even doing that. Who knows? It's just, it's very complicated, the power rankings. And I wish it was simpler to understand because it would take some of the guessing game out of it, you know? Well, luckily that's someone else's job. <laughs> I know. <laughs> I know, but I want to know. I want to know. We get down to the, the towards the, the end of the carrier. season, and we're talking about possible matchups. I want to know where we might be. That's that's six. the whole thing. Plato. I'm just trying to be nosy, selfish. It's called planning, you know. But another first down for Durfee as they're uh, moving the chains rather effectively here. Yeah, you can tell Totten obviously made some substitutions on the defensive side of the ball. Uh, some fresh legs in there. Yeah, absolutely. But you know what? For it, Again, like if, if you're Durfee, anything that helps you get a rhythm and a little bit of confidence in your in your plays, I mean, who cares who's on the other side? As long as you can execute, you know, you, you got Somerset next week, and Somerset's always tough. It'll definitely be a challenge for the guys up front. You know, I mean, I know Somerset hasn't changed up their offensive scheme. And <laughs> Not since at the, all. Since the beginning of time. <laughs> <laughs> it's really amazing. That that just blows my mind how successful they are with that on a regular basis. Another Play for Durfee down uh, across the 25. Back third down and Alexander. a long five, I guess you could say. Short six. Yeah, I mean, you're down 33 nothing. I tell you, let's, let's let them air it out a little bit. I mean, we have number three, Alvin Gaston, who made a nice reception on yeah. earlier in, this, in the same drive. I mean, why not? Give it to him in the end zone. Throw it there. Yeah, put it up for grabs. Chase rolling out. Lefty thrower. Again, so a little different than we're used to seeing, kind of, kind of rolling out opposite. Chase's pass complete to Strong. Got to see uh, a little bit. I mean, I was also filming, but so I wasn't watching necessarily with my own two eyes, to, but through the lens. Uh, we did a feature on the passing league, and they had the, the passing invitational here, and I um, thought Eli looked good. You know, um, obviously that kind of defense in a game like that's different than this because this is contact, but still I thought he looked good. Um, and I think he'll grow into this, grow into the season, uh, I should say, not into the position, but I think, you know, here it's his senior year. There's some maturity there, and, you know, I think he'll, uh, I think when it's said and done, he'll probably have a pretty decent season. Absolutely. He, he's he's shown signs carrier. of progression just through this game. Yeah. There was a fumble on the play. Wow. I was, covered by the Tigers. I was wondering why Taunton was like cheering. So, yep. Another drive stalled and Clock will continue to roll. We're under two minutes. Kind of interesting. So much of the scoring happened in the second quarter um, that basically we've seen almost all play happening on this left side of the field, the north end. Only had the one touchdown on the south side towards the scoreboard, but kind of been looking this way <laughs> almost the whole game. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I said it before back in the second quarter, the difference maker here, Taunton made adjustments. And unfortunately for Durfee, they didn't make adjustments. They didn't, they didn't click well on either side of the ball. I mean, the scoreboard shows it. Illegal formation on the Tigers. You know, and I know this one hurts. <laughs> oh, yeah. I, like we've said this whole time, we, uh, yeah. I've been there. It hurts. 
But now it's, as I said in pregame, it's all about adversity. How are we going to bounce back? We have Somerset next week right across the river. Yep. How are we going to bounce back? Well, Taunton doing kind of taking an interesting thing. They took an illegal formation first, and now they take the knee with under 40 yeah, seconds, and uh, that should basically run it out. Yep, Durfee's heading to uh, midfield. Well, Taunton has started the season 2-0, and and they've outscored their opponents 74 to nothing. They have not a lot of point, and, uh, man, we've seen how how dangerously prolific their offense can be with some big plays for quick scores. You know, that's a no knock to Derby on this game, but like you just said, you know, 70 something to zero in the last two games. I mean, this team is for real. They are serious. They're serious. And uh, next week, I believe they have uh, Middleborough next week. Let's see. Yeah, Middleborough next week, uh, and that's on the road. So that's next Friday night. And then they'll be back home on the 28th against King Philip for uh, Hawk Hawkmock League action. So uh, for Durfee, Somerset, road game next week, and then on the 29th, um, yeah, on the 29th, Friday the 29th, a 6.30 game, our next home game at 6.30, not the usual seven, because we're playing Nosset, non-league competition. Nosset's got quite a drive from the Cape. They're pretty down, pretty deep down the Cape, so uh, it'll be an earlier game, and uh, that way they can get home in a reasonable amount of time, so. But uh, this one goes final. You know, I have to say one thing, uh, I give the students here a lot of credit, too, because, uh, you know, Durfee kind of got taken out of this one rather quickly, and uh, the student section here, we had a really good crowd and nobody left. The, everybody was here literally until right now. People are filing out now. So uh, really happy to see that. Good support from the fans. Taunton traveled well. Uh, the, the far sides, far bleachers there on the other side were rather full. So uh, nice atmosphere tonight despite the score not going, you know, Durfee's way. Well, folks, remember, we live stream right here on our Facebook page, Fred TV Sports. Like and follow us. This is where you're going to find action all throughout the 2023-24 school year. And uh, if you're looking to rewatch the games, um, I don't find the Facebook player to be super great. YouTube is certainly better for that. We archive to YouTube. It's under Fred TV Sports. The same name, same logo. Look for it. Subscribe there so you don't miss a minute of our action. Thanks for tuning in tonight for our first broadcast of the school year. For Mike Fernandes, our cameraman tonight, my broadcast partner, Desmond Sanders, I'm Evan Massoud. Enjoy a good weekend. We will see you next week.